This video is kindly sponsored by Skillshare and more about them later. I've been told that I take things too close to my heart, that I'm too shy and socially awkward. I've been told that I need to toughen up and stop being such a snowflake. I've been told that I'm overreacting and why on earth I cannot have fun just like normal people do. But I am normal. I just feel too much. There's an overall social stigma about learning more about yourself. They always ask, well, are you that special that you require a special attitude? Well, it would be too much to expect a special attitude and care from the world around. But what if we can actually provide ourselves with that very well-needed special care? And what if it can be life-changing? We all need self-identification, thus we can utilize a special approach to ourselves and to our loved ones when it's much needed. For example, take a medical surgery. We all need different levels of anesthesia depending our, on our age, gender, weight and many, many other factors. And just the same way we need special emotional self-care to cope with living in our modern world. I don't remember where I heard about the phenomenon of high sensitivity first, but it was definitely an aha moment. I thought, yes, this is the way I am, this is the way I live, this is the way I feel. Since then, and it happened about a couple of years ago, maybe like three years ago, I've become more tolerant to myself, more self-caring, so to say. Here's a little yet important disclaimer. High sensitivity is not a diagnosis or condition. It's just a peculiarity of our nervous system. And no, highly sensitive people are not better than people with normal sensitivity. The thing is that all those conversations about HSPs are not aimed at dividing people into certain categories, but they are aimed rather to help people understand and accept their uniqueness and understand their difference from other people so that they can communicate and interact with the world better. I bet that a lot of HSPs at some point of their life thought that they were kind of misfits, that something is inherently wrong with them. And I know this feeling too well, and it's very tough mentally. That's why I'm so sure that it's important to discuss these things, because we have so many aspects in common, we have so many things to understand, to share, to appreciate and to cherish after all. The term highly sensitive person was coined by psychologist Elaine Aaron in the mid-90s. Elaine Aaron published her book The Highly Sensitive Person in 1996 and interest in the HSP concept has continued to grow since then. In a nutshell, a highly sensitive person, an HSP, is a neurodivergent individual who is thought to have an increased or deeper central nervous system sensitivity to physical, emotional or social stimuli. It is supposed that there are up to 15 to 20 of HSPs around the globe. Just imagine it. Every fifth person that you meet is highly sensitive. It's a pretty high percent to ignore, right? High sensitivity exists in at least 100 other species aside from humans. One research suggests that high sensitivity is an evolutionary trait that increases the likelihood of survival because HSPs are on the lookout for potential predators or dangerous situations. Why is it important to understand whether you are an HSP? Because it will make you freer, it will make you more balanced and understanding of your own self. It is essential to acknowledge how you are different from the general socially acceptable and approvable pattern of a personality. You have the right to be, just like anyone else. But how to know if you are a highly sensitive person? In the description section, I'll leave a link to a test created by Elaine Aaron. I got a score of 26 there. Let me know in the comments how much you got. 
Being highly sensitive has its pros and cons just like anything else in the world. It's just vital to understand that it, you are unlikely able to change your sensitivity. You cannot just get petrified or annihilate your feelings and emotions. It's just impossible. You have to live with it. And I know that it can be challenging. There are lots of survival guides for HSPs online, but the most important thing is to understand what triggers you. For example, I'm triggered by sounds. I'm a very light sleeper, I can't work in coffee shops or be surrounded by other people. I can't stand when people raise their voice. Special sounds and music help me stay more creative. Classical music often makes me cry in a good way. And so many of my memories are tied to certain soundscapes. Knowing this trigger, I try to avoid noisy gatherings and places. I always have, almost always have, my headphones with me with music and podcasts to dive in. I cannot sleep without my earplugs. And silence is my best friend. What triggers you? Is it a smell, a physical sensation, or bright light, or anything else? Just identify it and, based on the trigger, create a toolkit that will help you every given day. But there are some essentials that all HSPs need in their life. Slow slash simple living. Here goes the essentialism slash minimalism concept. Just the most important stuff without unnecessary stimuli. Enough rest. Such a mundane thing as good night's sleep is a must, including naps, and rest after an intense holiday or vacation. Quiet and cozy nook with soft warm light, soft blankets or anything that makes you feel welcomed and protected. Close relationships. We, HSPs, can't maintain shallow friendships and romances. We need depth and meaningfulness in everything. Means of self-expression. We need to have at least something for a creative outlet. This is how we process our experiences and emotions. And this is where Skillshare can become a very valuable companion. Skillshare offers a huge array of creativity-sparking online classes for literally anyone. My recently found gem is the course Hand Sewing Basics – Work Wonders with Fabric, Needle and Thread by Bernadette Banner, dress historian and filmmaker. Bernadette teaches how to make hand sewing strong, durable and enjoyable. At the moment, I don't have a sewing machine and I was intimidated by sewing larger items using just my hands. But after watching this course, I'm pretty ready to start. The class is aesthetically beautiful, practical, and inviting. If you have never tried Skillshare, you can do it right now, absolutely for free. The first 1000 people to use my link will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Beauty. We need beauty and harmony to feel whole and stay connected with the world. Time to make peace with changes, be them good or not so good. Important values to live up to. Highly sensitive people can't do without a moral compass. That's why we are so important for the world. We are the barometers, we are the lenses that have to stay clear. Do I regret my high sensitivity and do I wish to have a lower sensitivity level? Yes, sometimes, because it can be pretty overwhelming. I must confess that I tried to fix it somehow and it didn't work. In just two months I will turn 40 and I'm continuing to dig my way through the darkened and thickened universe of things. And I believe that high sensitivity is a magic lantern that we were given in order not to get lost. Thank you so much for watching this video till the end, my friends. Please feel free to share in the comments what you think about this topic, whether you are an HSP or you have someone who you love who is an HSP, and how do you think one can cope with feeling too much? 
let's share and support each other. And for now, be safe and keep your heart open. And I hope to see you soon. Пока-пока.